As befits an extraordinary aircraft, even the story of the F-117 Nighthawk's birth is something of a saga. The initial production decision was made in 1978, and its first flight was in June 1981, which meant less than a three-year window to get it in the air, which is exceptionally fast for an undertaking such as this. There was a lot of secrecy surrounding the building of this aircraft, and there is only one F-117 unit in the world, based at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. The F-117 Nighthawk was built for use by the United States Air Force, and the name of a military aircraft tends to come from their designation. F stands for fighter, B for bomber, and A for air-to-ground specialists. So, as it was given the name F-117, you would expect it to be a fighter jet, but in fact, it was incapable of air-to-air -air combat. It was a precision bomber that could hit targets deep within enemy lines, and also one of the first stealth attack aircrafts. With stealth meaning sneakiness or secrecy, this was what the Nighthawk was all about. It was surrounded in secrecy during its initial years and able to sneak up on its enemy without being noticed. The name Nighthawk was given to it for a reason, to ensure the aircraft could not be detected visually. It was only flown at night as it would have been much easier to spot in daylight. In fact, if the moon was too bright, the mission would sometimes be postponed. After the Vietnam War, it was obvious that a stealth aircraft was needed to reduce the amount of bombers being brought down by surface-to-air missiles. So the concept of the F-117 Nighthawk was being developed for over 10 years and was kept very much under wraps right up until 1988 when it was revealed to the public. In this video, we are going to take a look at what makes the F-117 Nighthawk a stealth aircraft and give you some interesting facts and figures about the aircraft itself. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click that notification bell to be one of the first to find out when we upload a new video. So what exactly is a stealth aircraft? The idea behind a stealth aircraft was theorized by a Soviet mathematician who in the 1960s found that the strength of a radar return wasn't related to the object's size but instead related to the edge configuration of the object. The Lockheed Corporation was the company responsible for creating this type of aircraft in their secretive Skunk Works division, and working under the codename Have Blue, produced this single-seated, twin-engine jet fighter bomber. There were only 59 of these aircrafts made in total. The F-117 Nighthawk's first mission was during the US invasion of Panama in 1989. Then, in 1991, it scored direct hits on 1,600 high-value targets in Iraq during the Gulf War. The F-117 was frequently deployed to Southwest Asia, and on their first trip out there, with the aid of aerial refueling, they flew from Holloman, New Mexico to Kuwait, which is approximately an 18 and a half hour flight. This was a record for single-seat fighter aircrafts. The only combat loss was the aircraft being shot down over Siberia, during the Kosovo conflict in 1999. The aircraft was retired between 2006 and 2008, although it has been seen over the skies of America several times since. The Nighthawk is mainly constructed of aluminum, with titanium for areas of the engine and exhaust systems. The outer surface of the aircraft is coated with a black radar absorbent material. Painting it black meant that it was less obvious to the naked eye at night which is when it did most of its missions. The radar cross-section of the F-117 has been estimated at between 10 and 100 square centimeters, which is roughly the size of a golf ball. The aircraft itself is an unusual shape with faceted angled surfaces. Rather than rounded sides, it has flat sides, giving a diamond appearance. The wide and flat structure of the engine exhaust area reduces the infrared and radar detectability of the aft section of the engine. The two large tail fins slant slightly outwards to provide an obstruction to the infrared and radar returns from the engine exhaust area. This is all to focus on a minimal radar cross-section and not so much on aerodynamic performance. The surfaces and edge profiles are optimized to reflect hostile radar into narrow beam signals directed away from the enemy radar detector. All the doors and opening panels on the aircraft have sawtooth, forward, and trailing edges to reflect radar. The F-117 has four elevons on the inboard and outboard trailing edge of the wing, 
The V-shaped tail, which controls the yaw of the aircraft, acts as a flying tail, which means that the whole surface acts as a control surface. The elevons do not act in the normal way, as flaps to reduce the rate of descent for touchdown, which means landing speed is high at about 180 to 190 miles per hour. So a drag parachute is also used. At a height of 12 feet 5 inches, length of 65 feet 11 inches, and wingspan of 43 feet 4 inches, the F-117s could easily be detected with the naked eye, but were not so easily detectable by radar. The Nighthawk was not designed for speed. In fact, many pilots reported that the Nighthawk was a surprisingly difficult plane to keep in the air. It took a quadruple redundant computerized fly-by-wire system to get it off the ground. No wonder pilots called it the Wobblin' Goblin. The fly-by-wire systems are semi-automatic, computer-regulated aircraft flight control systems that replace mechanical flight controls with an electronic interface. The top speed of the Nighthawk is only 623 miles per hour, which made it difficult to detect acoustically and having no onboard radar meant it emitted almost no electronic noise. It is powered by two non-afterburning General Electric F404 turbofan engines and is equipped with sophisticated navigation and attack systems integrated into a digital avionics suite. The two internal weapons bays on board the Nighthawk consist of laser-guided bombs or radar-seeking and infrared-seeking missiles. By using inertial guidance, infrared sensors, digital maps, and radio commands from satellites or other aircraft, the F-117 could navigate without emitting its own telltale radar signal. Before any flight, mission data is downloaded into the IBM AP-102 mission control computer, which integrates it with the navigation and flight controls to provide a fully automated flight management system. This allows the pilot, after takeoff, to hand over the flight control to the mission program until the first target is within visual range. The pilot can then take back control of the aircraft to deliver the weapon. Once the weapon has been delivered, the impact is recorded on the aircraft's internally mounted video system, which provides real-time damage assessment. In 2008, the U.S. Air Force retired the F-117 Nighthawk in favor of the more advanced F-22 Raptor, which is a superior fighter in the air, as well as a ground attacker. Although the F-117 Nighthawk went into retirement, there have been many sightings of it in various places in America, but the latest was in October 2020. At least two of the F-117s arrived at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar in San Diego. There are only a few places where the F-117 can be seen close up. The Hill Aerospace Museum in Utah, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, Edwards Air Force Base Flight Test Museum in California, and the Ronald Reagan Library in California. The remains of the Nighthawk that was shot down over Siberia are also on display at the Museum of Aviation in Belgrade. The F-117 represented a dawning in a new era of jet fighting. Its emphasis on stealth, as opposed to power, launched a way of fighting where it was more important to go into a battleground undetected and as efficiently as possible, rather than all guns blazing. The engineering that went into the machine left no expense spared when it came to evading radar and not being seen by the enemy. Advancements in technology at the time allowed this to be successful, and it was only after future technology surpassed what the F-117 was capable of that it was sunsetted, and was then cemented as a hugely significant piece of military technology and engineering. What do you think of the design of the F-117 Nighthawk? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos straight in your inbox. Thanks for watching.